welcome to my name is Kate. This is my channel, Chapter Kate. Today I'm going to be doing a review of and then kind of some magicians. I wasn't gonna do a review on this, but I just have too many thoughts and I just I have too much to say about this book not to do a review. So here it goes. Since I didn't really plan for this review, I didn't really annotate my book. I didn't use flags, I didn't really take notes. I didn't do any of that stuff, I just wanted to experience it because it was just so much to sort of grasp and put your head around and I just wanted to experience the book. And so the experience kind of was like this whole mindful thing because I was just in the moment the whole time and just very much into this. The book is written by Kat Howard and honestly when I first saw this book it was definitely like that cover is gorgeous. I don't know what the cover is about but it's gorgeous. And then I saw there's a little comment up here by Neil Gaiman, the one and only. This is a remarkable writer. I made a few words, but enough, enough words for me to buy this book. So since I didn't really plan for this, I'm kind of just gonna free ball it. Um, so first of all, this book is kind of an adult urban high fantasy novel. So I've heard the words like urban fantasy a lot, but I've never really like looked up what it means. Urban fantasy. Not how you spell it. All right, so it says the interwebs say that urban fantasy is a subset of contemporary fantasy consisting of novels and stories with a supernatural and or magical elements set in a contemporary real world urban settings as opposed to traditional fantasy set in imaginary locations. So this is definitely an urban fantasy. It takes place in New York City if I'm not mistaken. They definitely talk about Central Park and yep, New York City. But it's also an unseen magical world, so they're basically, they exist alongside, you know, non-magical folks, but there's a lot that is hidden from us, the normies of the world, the mundanes. And they do refer to the non-magical people as mundane in this. So you might recognize that language if you've read the Shadowhunter books, or if you ever write, like, roleplay writing. Usually people refer to you as a mundane if you're the writer. Um, so that is a language that is, you know, comfortable to everybody. Let me just read you the little blurb on the back. It's vague, but it captured me. Sydney breathed in. Sydney was all at once an entire forest. She was root and leaf, dirt and sky. Green and spring were blood in her veins, air in her lungs. She was, between one heartbeat and the next, all of magic. That makes me kind of get a Chosen One vibe from it. Um, it wasn't entirely a Chosen One trope but it definitely had the sort of the unseen world rests upon this one person's shoulders a bit um but it it's so good. it's just so good so my expectations for this were kind of flowery purple prose um i did expect meta like metaphorical speech which i really really like um i did not expect the amount of stuff to process in this Gosh, there was so much. I did not expect it to be as in-depth as it was. I expected it to be more of a simple story, um, everything more vague descriptions, um, things like that. I did not expect what I got. And also I didn't really read the blurb on the inside, the sort of synopsis, because I wanted a little bit of surprise and to kind of jump into the world as, you know, with a blind eye. So the characters, there are so many characters in this book that it follows. Um, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about each of them. You're not super sure at first, or at least I wasn't, who the main protagonist was. Even though she, her name is mentioned on the back, Sydney, um, a magician named Sydney is kind of the main protagonist. However, it has so many different points of view um, in this book that at first you're kind of like, so where does my focus need to go? Because there's just so much. Um, and there's so many characters to keep up with. I find my, I found myself, for the first half of the book, I had to keep flipping back and forth to kind of find, who were they talking about? Wait, which one was that? I don't remember. So um, I had a hard time kind of keeping up with who was who, you know, the first half. Because there were just so many characters and that's something I always have a hard time kind of organizing in my brain. Um, but it definitely follows a lot of characters. It follows some men, some women, some good guys, some bad guys, some older magicians, some younger magicians. Um, and it addresses a lot of important topics. Like um, in the Unseen World there are houses. And the houses are sort of places of power in the Unseen World. Um, you can only hold a house if you are... Um, a strong magician and during this tournament that happens every about 20 years I believe 
think it's 20 years. There's a tourney, and each house has a champion, basically. They can also champion themselves, or they can hire somebody, or they can have somebody that's in their family line. Basically compete to be sort of the head of the unseen magical world. Um, so there's a lot of just family drama going on. We have Miranda Prospero, who hires a magician that is the son of her enemy. Um, her enemy uses his daughter. Um, her own son that she disinherited is trying to get his own house. And that guy's best friend is trying to start his house. His name's Laurent. And he's the one that hires Sydney. And there's just, it's complex. Like, it's a lot to kind of describe. But basically, there's a lot of intermingling of, like, family situations and issues and blah, 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 blah. And you're trying to figure out how it's all connected. And it also addresses some really cool issues of in the heads of houses, there's not a lot of diversity. Most of them are old white men. And that is actually addressed. Um, Laurent, which is the magician who's trying to start his own house that hired Sydney, he addresses the fact that he is the only black person that is trying to hold a house and that there are no black heads of house um, in the unseen world. And that doesn't become a major theme, but change does. And trying to invoke change into the unseen world does become a major theme in the story. And he also addresses how there's not very many women either. Miranda Prospero, that is a head of a house, she only became that way because, you know, she kind of inherited it from her husband. So there's, there's a lot of um, political kind of undertones with that and, you know, trying to break the glass ceiling with different things and trying to invoke change. And that is a kind of constant theme. In this story in this story which is really complicated there's also something called shadows and they're really shady and they're very mysterious and a lot of people get their magic from shadows and i'm not going to go a lot into what shadows is because that is another thing that you kind of have to figure out as you go on this journey yeah <laughs> but they they kind of find throughout the turning which is the tournament um that a lot of magic is failing like simple spells are failing complex f spells are failing all kinds of spells are failing and they're trying to figure out what's kind of going on with that um so that's a whole whole situation it's so hard to kind of like explain it because it's so complicated and if i give you more details then it's a spoiler so there's just so much but the language in here is gorgeous it's even from the blurb i read on the back you can tell that the language is just absolutely gorgeous um and there is definitely some metaphor in here and i am a sucker for metaphor i'm just a sucker for metaphor like for example since change is a major theme of the story um i think it's interesting that they have a lot of references to um, the forest and trees because um, there's like the seasons changing spell and spring is a major part of that and trees and spring kind of represent a new life and that's what they're trying to bring about in the unseen world is a new life for it and a new life for magic and those that are in the unseen world magicians young magicians older magicians magicians that don't quite fit the mold of powerful white men that's cool it's really cool it's just it's all so cool and i like at the end there are consequences for things it doesn't all just wrap up with a neat little bow and you know everything doesn't turn out perfect there is some some things at the end that just aren't ideal and I think um, Murphy Napier, she she also did a little bit of a mini review on this during her reading vlog. And she mentioned this book as well. And um, she also kind of appreciated that aspect of the book. And <laughs> I'm so glad someone else read this because I picked it up and I was like, I feel like no one's read this. I would love to talk about it with somebody. So I'm really excited that someone read it. The development of the characters throughout the story is beautiful. I love how they change, how they grow, how some of them get what's coming to them. Um, I love that there's this trope that I can't stand in a lot of books where like main characters will keep a secret from like everybody in the story and it's really annoying because like if they told the secret a lot of things will be cleared up. The main character in here like literally like there's like a little bit of secret keeping but then she's like she tells everybody what's up and she doesn't keep that secret because there's no point in it and like I love that that trope doesn't happen. I love that she actually is involving other people in what's going on because that's what she has to do to get where she needs to get with her secrets and I love that. I also love how in a lot of books there's this trope where like you know the main female if it's a female protagonist the main female is kind of like oh sex is a no-no and that they're like a virginal and all this kind of stuff and there's no problem with abstinence or, or asexuality or anything like that or aversion to sexual you know um actions but I, I find that it's so common in books that the if it's a female protagonist there's like no history of her having sex with anyone and that never happens 
in this book it's like she kind of jumps right into one of those relationships and then you see how it plays out it's not like the end goal and I think that's interesting and more realist realistic because a lot of books that's like happens near the end it's like something that they're kind of working towards throughout the book and then you don't know what happens after almost <laughs> you know and so it's kind of cool that it sort of start just jumps into it you know in the book but I will say there's not like it's not like smutty there's not like any like smut in this book the plot of this book just moves along so in such a fascinating way it does have that trope of it you know having a tournament which a lot of books have that trope like the goblet of fire um a gathering of shadows there are other books that have sort of that tournament magic competition sort of trope and i love the way that this one does it there's a lot of politics in it and i think that more should sort of address those politics the speed is interesting because i'm not really sure how to describe it the first half of it takes a lot of brain power to kind of get through and just kind of you know um absorb everything and so it so it may be a little slow for some people i liked it because the the language is kind of what gets me through if there's like a lot of beautiful language then i will be able to stick with it a lot easier um and then the last half is just like addictive you're just like flipping through the pages because it's just so freaking good i just loved it so much Ugh. i think another thing i enjoyed about this book is that a lot of books with female protagonists have this whole thing where like they it's like the not like other girls trip almost but she doesn't have like any female friends it's mostly guys everywhere and i think that it's interesting that she has female friends there are other females that are allies to her and um but there's also males that are allies to her one you know there might be a love interest but there's also like just platonic you know relationships and they're there's something that's addressed that is very interesting to me because in in a lot of things in society if something you know, if you'll see this portraying on, you know, shows and things that if there are two guys that are really close friends, if one does something bad, the other one might stick up for them because they're buddies. And this one, it doesn't happen. Like, the good guy is good. And I, I, I enjoy that. I kind of enjoy seeing that. Like, the, there's, a, there's a good guy in here. But overall, the book was absolutely amazing. I would recommend it to everyone. It was beautifully written. Um, everything was just so artfully constructed and just was so well thought out. And I think that it was an enjoyable read for anyone who enjoys, you know, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you know, if you feel like you want to just devour something, then this is the book to read. Um, I'm definitely giving it five out of five stars. As you know, I'm not stingy with my stars, but even if I was, this would definitely be a five star book for me. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under the wind